So tetraamine copper 2 nitrate, or TACN, is a complex copper salt that I've been interested in trying to synthesize for a while now. Most of the literature out there on this compound is about the hazards it poses in industries that process large quantities of ammonium nitrate. In the presence of moisture and ammonia, copper metals can be converted into the blue-purple salt. This is a really bad situation, as TACN deflagrates rapidly when exposed to flame, and it also has the potential to detonate when it is confined and exposed to a strong impact. Uh, so while it's relatively weak as far as energetic materials go, the accidental detonation of TACN in the presence of ammonium nitrate has the potential to start a catastrophic chain reaction. Uh, even though I won't be working with any ammonium nitrate, it's always important to take proper safety precautions and have a healthy respect for the materials that you're working with. I'll be breaking the experiment down into three main steps. First, I will need to create a concentrated ammonia solution. Then I will need to create concentrated copper nitrate solution. Finally, I will combine the two of them in order to form the TACN. I've tried this experiment a few times in the past, and each time the yield was pretty bad. This is probably because I wasn't using strong enough ammonia. Despite what the labels may imply, hardware store ammonia is relatively dilute, and usually only contains between 4 to 6% ammonium hydroxide by mass. The ammonia solution I will be making will be closer to 25 to 30%. I started by measuring out stoichiometric amounts of sodium hydroxide and ammonium sulfate. I added the ammonium sulfate to the round bottom flask and placed my collection beaker in an ice bath. I then make a solution out of the sodium hydroxide and add it to my separatory funnel. The goal here is to add the sodium hydroxide in a slow, controlled manner. Producing too much ammonia gas at once can cause significant and rapid changes in temperature, which can have unpredictable consequences, including a higher risk for suckback. Once I've added all the NaOH and the reaction appears to be slowing down, I place the flask into a hot water bath and bring it to near boiling. This will help drive out as much of the ammonia gas as possible. After letting it sit a little while longer, I noticed that the solution inside the flask began to produce these kind of large, foamy bubbles. I'm not sure if this is an indication that the reaction is nearing completion, or if there was potentially a contaminant inside of one of my reactants that was causing this. But either way, I decided it was a good time to finish, so I pulled my collection beaker out of my ice bath, transferred it to a different container, and set it aside for later on. Next, I'm going to make the copper nitrate. To do so, I simply need to combine elemental copper with concentrated nitric acid. I measured out a stoichiometric excess of copper wire and 63.3 milliliters of azeotropic nitric acid. I add a small amount of the acid to the copper wire and it immediately begins to react. As you can see, this reaction produces quite a lot of the nitrogen dioxide gas. This is really not good stuff. You really don't want to be breathing this in. I decided to let the gas build up a little bit before turning on the fan, just because I think it's a really cool looking reaction. But I did have good ventilation. I was wearing goggles and a respirator while I was doing this. After adding all the acid and waiting for the reaction to slow down, I removed the excess copper wire and stirred the solution over a gentle heat. What I ended up with was a clear blue solution with a slightly viscous composition. Now to make the TACN, I start by slowly adding my ammonia solution to the copper nitrate. The few videos online regarding the synthesis of TACN suggest adding ammonia until you have a clear deep purple solution. However, due to the reduced water content in both of my reactants, a large amount of the TACN remained undissolved. Since I wanted to crystallize it, I thought about diluting it with some water to fully dissolve everything, but decided to stick to my procedure and see what happens. I finally added a few milliliters of acetone to reduce the polarity and help any aqueous TACN precipitate out. I then cover and insulate the beaker until morning. In the morning, I decanted off the solution, and what I found was pretty much what I was expecting. There was a layer of crystals on the top that had formed overnight, and then underneath that was more of a sedimentary precipitate, and I'm pretty sure that's just the stuff that never dissolved in the first place, and simply settled to the bottom. So I separate the crystals from the rest of the precipitate, and I set everything aside to dry. I'll finish off the video by showing a quick demonstration of the properties that TACN exhibits when exposed to heat. I did a low temp and a high temp test, and was actually quite surprised with the results. 
In the first test, the TA scene appeared to melt and bubble quite a bit before disappearing into a cloud of smoke, magician style. On the other hand, the second test was a bit more dramatic, exhibiting beautiful green and yellow flames before letting out a bright smoky flash, and it even let out a cute little toxic fart at the end.